Hi, I'm Chaplain Larry Crabtree with the St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office and the Maryland State Police. And I'm Chaplain Charlie Wharton with the St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office. And Larry, today we're going to begin a new series, a series that we've entitled The Softer Side of Law Enforcement. Whenever we talk about law enforcement, some of the things that traditionally come up are uh, firearms training or law training or even uh, emergency operations or maybe even uh, uh, report writing. But there's some other things that are very important as we train our law enforcement officers about how to work in today's environment. Yeah, and uh, we're really going to be focusing, I think, in this series uh, with emotions and how emotions impact behavior or even perceptions of those that are outside of law enforcement in the community. So I think it'll be a pretty interesting and I hope a, a helpful time that we spend together. So Charlie, let's set a base for anything we're going to talk about in this series. And I think the foundational concept that we all need to grasp is something that we would call emotional intelligence. So get us going by what do we mean when we use that phrase emotional intelligence? Emotional intelligence is the ability to process and to identify our own emotions and then also to be able to identify and work with the emotions of others. Uh, the concept is in a sense it's relatively new. It was uh, brought to the forefront in a 1995 book by Daniel Goldman mm. called mm. Emotional Intelligence. And the, the idea behind it is that we are emotional people. You know traditionally we've looked at the value of someone maybe by their intelligence and the, the phrase uh, intelligence quotient or IQ is mm. often used. That's, that's what brings somebody to the head of the class. But what we started noticing at the tail end of the last century is that emotions and the ability to work with our own and other people's emotions really become very important in especially in law enforcement. And I think, let me say this too, in a lot of the counseling I do, like in marriage, for males, for men, uh, understanding emotions is rather difficult. We don't talk about emotions, we don't know how to express them, and so for those in law enforcement it's helpful to begin to think about these things. And typically when we think about emotions, the first thing that comes to mind is that, that touchy-feely side yeah, of it. Yeah. But when you look at it, emotion is everything that is, it's our whole makeup. And so it's important for us to understand um, who we are as well as identify the emotions that, that, other people, uh, that, that other people have. When we talk about emotional intelligence, basically there are four key components to it. The first one is self-awareness. Self-awareness is the ability to look inside me and identify how I'm doing. To identify the emotions that are innate inside me and especially those emotions that I may be struggling with today. Mm. Uh, maybe it's anger or fear or some of those others. So first of all, it's self-awareness. Now are all those emotions going to be negative? No, they're not. In fact, some of the ones that we attribute to being negative, they may be some of the most important ones we have. Let's take fear, for example. Fear keeps us alive, especially out there on the street. If you've got somebody that's been in law enforcement for years and they say, I'm not afraid of anything, I'm not sure yeah. what that says. That can be kind of a, a scary concept. Yeah. So even those things that might be perceived as negative or softer can be very important. Excellent, good point. The second one is what we call self-regulation or self-control. It's not enough to know my emotion. I've got to be in a position to make sure that I control it. Um, let's go back to fear that we were just talking about for a second. When fear overwhelms us, it's going to shut us down. But understanding fear and then being able to control it, that's what allows first responders to do so much of their job. Yeah. So it's not just identifying it, it's controlling it. There's a concept from emotional intelligence called uh, emotional hijacking. And that is where an emotion overwhelms us to the point that we, we can't get back to the logical. And what tends, how would you, like, when you've been hijacked by your emotions, what happens typically? You either A, shut down, or B, you become so involved in that emotion that you lose track of everything else that's going on around you. you. You start to think from 
an emotional part of your brain rather than from a logical part of your brain. So what's something practical that law enforcement officers can do that they can become more sensitive to what is going on inside? I think we have to take a self-inventory. Uh, you got to know yourself. Uh, when you start to realize your pet peeves, when you start to realize those things that really bug you and, uh, and those things that, uh, that ruin your day or ruin a moment, once you identify those things, that's the first step. And then the second step is being able to control it and saying, okay, I know it's there, I've got to move on. I've got to set that aside and move on. The third thing is social awareness. We talk about being able and, and needing to know ourselves, but if we're gonna be effective in the social environment of law enforcement, we've gotta be aware of what other people are going through. Or we don't just show up on a scene where everybody's normal, everybody's having a good time. There are gonna be emotions that are out there and they very well may, may be hijacked by those emotions. So we need to be able to perceive it and then we also need to be able to work within that person's emotion. Charlie, would this also play out in our reaction with um, coworkers and administration? Because you know, sometimes there's a lot of emotional stuff that can be expressed, and is there any benefit to recognizing what might be going on inside somebody else at that point? That is the essence of what leadership is. It's being able to identify where that person is and what needs to be done to bring them up out of it, to help them to become the best that they can be. Not only is it important with our coworkers, it's especially important in our families. Excellent. A final aspect of this is what I want to call relationship management or relationship motivation. How do we help people become the best that they can be? Mm -hmm. um, how do we maintain good relationships? How can we communicate effectively? When we're able to do that, that makes us that complete person and that complete leader. So Charlie, as we've been talking about um, the importance of recognizing our emotion, emotional intelligence and how the impacts that has, is, is this something that you kind of are born with or is it something you need to learn? I think there are some people that have an easier time with it than others do. Maybe it's from environment, maybe it's even from uh, childhood education. But it is something that we can all put to work. If, if you can teach me to shoot, if you can teach me to the, the constitutional law, you should, me, you should be able to teach me the ability to read other people and work with them. Excellent. So this is great advice. I think we've set a really good solid base about where we're going in this series. And so, Charlie, thanks for that helpful information. I don't think we think about this kind of stuff very often. But it is so much of an important part of who we really are. Agreed, agreed. Well, for now, be strong. And be safe.